But I see people get so wrapped up in their golf swing that then they forget to hit the ball. And they're instructing themselves so much on, um, you know, how to hit the ball that, that uh, in the, and when you think about it, the golf swing only takes about a second to make. You know, when you stand up to the ball and you get over the ball and then you make your swing and you, you hit the shot, it takes about a second and a half. You know how long you've actually played golf? If you, you let's say you shoot 90, about less than three minutes. <laughs> so you're out there five hours, and those three minutes are the most agonizing, frustrating three minutes of the day. There's a great uh, teacher, J.H. Taylor, who won four British Opens at the turn of the century. I was just over in Ireland and Great Britain and, uh, uh, last week. And uh, he said that there can't be a natural free-flowing golf swing when the mind is involved in instructing the body. And I find this is what happens. If I could get into your mind out there today, I would bet 90% of you are out there and you're saying, okay, get that elm there, put that head there, do that, you know? And your body just can't respond to that. If you just think about the design of a golf club, if you look at the design of all of your full swing clubs, you can see that, that there's a lot of weight in each head. And all that weight is on the outside of the shaft, see? The, the only time you have a shaft that goes into the top of the center line of the club head is with a putter. Because a putter, you want it to go back more like a pendulum. But the reason all this weight is out here, that it, as you swing this club around, the shaft, the face should just naturally rotate. Doesn't do it like this, but it does as you swing back and through, it should just naturally rotate. And that's why you want to just think about swinging the club in a, in a circle or an arc. And, uh, and not, there shouldn't be really any, any up and down chopping motion or even any backwards or forwards, because you can see when I do this, it takes the centrifugal force out of the swing. And one of the tools that, uh, that I've developed that we uh, used to market, I had a television show with Kenny Rogers and Pat Summerall. Some of you may have seen that in the early 90s. It was one of the original infomercials. <laughs> but we sold about 150,000 of these little balls. But you can see if I swing this back and forth, See, it'll just touch me right underneath my shoulder on both sides. And that's what you want to do with your golf swing. See how my wrist just naturally come around and the ball touches me? And if I throw in an up and down motion, what happens to centrifugal force? See, it's all going this way, see? And so you're not getting the force that way. Another thing is to have a plan when you go up to the shot. I find that most amateurs do not have a plan. And when you look out there, what happens a lot of times you get on the tee and you see this out of bounds to the right. And what's the first thing you say to yourself? Mentally. Don't hit it out of bounds, right? Now your mind can't differentiate a negative and a positive. It just sees you hitting it out of bounds, right? <laughs> then you go to your bag and you go, I better get a club out so I don't hit it out of bounds, right? Now you've what? You've imagined it again, right? <laughs> then you get up to the ball and you go, don't hit it out of bounds. And then you make your swing and it goes right out of bounds. And then what do you say? I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> and see, your body will follow the image it sees. So you really need to determine a good positive image. I was 17th alternate going into, uh, uh, for Pebble Beach one year. And you're not going to get in a 17th alternate. I mean, ever, ever. I don't even, that, this is history's made. You know, well, they call me Wednesday morning. I'm in Orlando. I was speaking at a, at a breakfast for a corporation out at Disney World. He said, you want to play Pebble Beach? You got to get out here. So, all right, so I book a plane. I fly all the way out. I get to Los Angeles. It's raining so hard. Uh, I can barely get to the plane. I got to take this little prop up to Monterey. I get up there 11 o'clock at night. Step out of the plane, staying with some friends in Pacific Grove, got blue jeans on, sweatshirt. My clubs and all my clothes is down in LA. Missed the plane. Now it's 11 o'clock at night. I said, well, what time am I playing? Eight tomorrow morning. I said, well, who am I playing with? And they said, oh, you're taking Ray Floyd's place. You're in the premier group. Your partner is Clint Eastwood for three days. <laughs> I'm going, oh boy, this is all I need, you know. You know, finding clothes for me is not really good, you know. I was a 32, 28. <laughs> no way. <laughs> finding golf clubs. I mean, we are having a hard, hard time. And I'm playing at Cypress Point, too, which is one of the all-time classics. 
Well, I'm on the practice range, and Clint's hitting balls with me. And the first thing he does, he bends over to hit a practice driver, and he rips his pants all the way from the crotch up to the back. <laughs> so that was not a good start for Clint. You know, so he's got to wear these rain pants all day. But I knew I was going to have to play that famous 16th hole, 220 yards over the water. You know, the seals are barking, the whales are spouting, you know, and there's always a huge crowd there because that's where all the celebrities get backed up. So I know this is what's going to happen. And you're not going to lay it up, which is really the smart thing. So you're going to have to go with like a four wood to get it over on the green. So what I did in preparation is I stood out there, I picked a flag out, took this borrowed four wood, teed up ball. I hit about 30 shots just going through my routine. You know, so when I was going to get on that hole, I was going to be automatic. I'm not going to think of nothing, you know. And so here we come around to the 15th green. We're coming over the 16th tee. Gerald Ford comes out, you know, the president. <laughs> Say hi to Clint. <laughs> He's standing there. There's all these celebrities standing there, you know. And I'm going, oh, boy, okay, Lord. <laughs> Help me with a shot. And I teed it up, and I just imagined myself on that practice range. Went up, took my little shot, you know, went Boom and it flew, and it stuck in the green that far from the hole, just buried like that, you know. And then I almost missed the putt. I was so nervous. <laughs> but that's just a kind of an example. So, you know, if you've got a, a crazy uh, hole that you struggle with on your home course or somewhere, practice that one on the range, you know. You don't want to have to start thinking when you get out there.